welcome back to another film review by Fat Ninja Studios. I'm your host, Jackie Kay, and today we're checking out False Positive, a film that resembles a modern day retelling of Rosemary's Baby. This film was long, drawn out, and the plot fell apart midway through the first act. None of the characters are particularly likable, and the film is shot in this clinical way that doesn't really give it a creep factor, nor does it fully invoke a dreamlike state. Uh, before we dive further into that, however, please hit that like button and make sure you subscribe to the channel for more videos like this. Don't forget to deliver on that bell button to stay notified whenever a new video is released. The film follows Lucy and Adrian Martin, a young married couple having trouble getting pregnant and needing to go to see a specialist. It just so happens that Adrian, the husband, knows a world famous one that he used to go to school with. Dr. John Hindle artificially inseminates the wife, and voila, she's pregnant with triplets, two boys and a girl. However, since she's high risk, the doctor suggests a selective reduction, and the couple decides to keep the girl after a long and arduous argument. In the meantime, Lucy joins a group of other expecting mothers and befriends a young woman named Corgan and a midwife named Grace. During her reduction surgery, she wakes up halfway through and overhears a strange conversation between her husband and the doctor, basically discussing her baby as the future antichrist or vessel. When Lucy experiences bleeding from her uterus, the doctor assures her that it's common, but Lucy isn't so convinced and talks about her experiences with Corgan. Over time, Lucy becomes wary of Dr. Hindle and starts to have problems at work. She is diagnosed with antenatal depression and prescribed medication, which leads her to hallucinate meeting with Grace and experience more abdominal pain. Lucy decides to actually meet with Grace in person and learns that she lost her mother two years prior. That night, she has a strange dream about Adrian and Dr. Hindle having sex and decides to break into her husband's safe. There she finds a file on her, proving that she's being monitored. She goes to Corgan with this information, who passes it on to her lawyer husband and advises Lucy to act normal. Of course, Lucy does the opposite, exploding at her husband, threatening to quit her job, and that she wants Grace to be her doctor from now on. During Lucy's baby shower, she finds out that Corgan is actually on Dr. Hindle's side, and thinks that Lucy is just experiencing mommy brain. <laughs> Lucy suddenly goes into contractions and goes to Grace to have the baby delivered. Here she finds out that she is actually carrying the boys instead of the girl, but halfway through the delivery, she is brought to Dr. Hindle. When Lucy confronts Grace about it, Grace is not at all the person that she has been talking to, and Lucy has been imagining quite a bit. Now, losing her mind over everything, especially after finding out her husband and Dr. Hindle are going into practice together, she goes to the clinic to confront him. Here she learns that Dr. Hindle actually used his own sperm to fertilize her, as he does with all of his patients, because of his superior genes. On the table is what is left of the girl, a premature fetus. Dr. Hindle tries to subdue her, but she gets the upper hand, tying up his nurse and beating Dr. Hindle to death. She takes the fetus with her, returns home, and accuses her husband of having a grand plot to have the boys and take advantage of naive women. She hands him the twins and tells him to leave, then sits down with the fetus and hallucinates breastfeeding it. So, what to say after all that? The ending isn't concrete, although I surmise that basically she has some sort of postpartum and went crazy and imagined the whole thing. That, or there really is some secret organization of doctors who plan to have babies with tons of random women. Either way, the film was all over the place, the pacing was awful, none of the characters were worth rooting for, and the ending was basically incoherent. This film gets a mere 2 out of 10, a complete waste of time. There's little to no suspense, 
And if it's a statement on mental health, it was done in extremely poor taste. There's not much else that I can say, except that if you're looking to make a worst movies of 2021 list, go ahead and watch this one. I want to say thank you for sitting through this video. If you liked it, please give it a thumbs up. If you're not already, please subscribe to our channel. We're so close to hitting the 100 subs. If you're feeling generous and want to help us make better videos, please check out our Patreon, which will be linked in the description box below. You can reach out to us on Twitter, at StudiosFat, or chat with us on Discord, which is also linked conveniently below. I've been your host, Jackie Kay, and before I go, while movies and TV will depict mental illness to be these grandiose, villainous aspects that cause people to go brutally insane and cause anarchy, in real life, it can be as simple as not wanting to get out of bed every morning. And that's okay, you're not alone. I myself have been dealing with anxiety and depression and finally have a medication routine that works for me. So, my advice, reach out to your friends or to mental health hotlines or even to other people on social media. There's nothing wrong with getting help. Make sure to take care of yourself because you deserve happiness and comfort and you are worthy of love. Thanks again and take care.